By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and also happy 2020, happy 2020, happy new year. This is the first video released in 2020, exciting stuff. And uh, in this video, I will be playing one of my new brews. It's called Shadow Spectre and I'm going to tell you all about it in a minute. Uh, but I'm also playing against a very interesting deck, a five color singleton deck. Yes, you, you've heard me correctly, a five color singleton deck. And this is, this is a really cool and spicy deck. Uh, I just want to uh, look at it right now. So here is the deck, five color singleton. And when you look closely at this picture, you probably notice something. And that is that when you start at the left at the red elemental blast and you go all the way to the black lotus, you're in the middle of the picture. And then all of a sudden, the picture starts again. You again see the Black Lotus and then you kind of see the same deck. So it's a mirror image. So they're both the same decks. And this is not photoshopped or anything. The creator of these, both of these decks, well, they're the same, but the owner of both these decks is Richard. And you can actually find them. There's an Instagram account here on the picture, old school MTG underscore NL. And so if you have questions about this deck, you can go there and ask him. And he actually made this especially for the meetup. Um, and um, he's made two identical decks because he shares his collection with one of his best friends. And in this way, they can both play with the same deck. Um, so he thought that would be fun. And I just really, I like this picture because there's so much to see here because it is a singleton deck, meaning that every card is only in here once, a single copy. Um, of course, technically, it's not a singleton deck because um, to make the mana base kind of work, he needed to put in four City of Brasses and some extra dual lands of certain duels. But hey, I mean, it's it's a beautiful deck. For me, it's a singleton deck. It looks great, and I can't wait to play against this. And I'm playing with my new brew, Shadow Spectre. And Shadow Spectre is named after two cards, Elves of Deep Shadow and Hypnotic Spectre. And this whole deck actually revolves around me having four Bayou. I managed in 2019 to get four Bayou together. And I thought, okay, wait a minute. Now I can build something with uh, black and green. And then I thought, okay, I've got some Taiga, so I'll put in some red. And um, what I've done is I've made a deck where I'm hoping to win by tempo and value. So I've got a lot of cheap spells that I think have high value, like a lightning bolt. It's only one red, but it can deal a lot of damage. It can deal direct damage. It can kill a mistress factory, which is awesome. It can help in combat situations. It's really a powerful card. Everybody knows that lightning bolt is powerful. I'm also playing with giant growth. Almost the same story. Lightning bolt, of course, is more powerful, but giant growth is very close by to that power level. Uh, and when we look at this deck, we see that I've got five mana dorks. So I've got three Elves of Deep Shadow. I've got two uh, Birds of Paradise. And obviously what I'm hoping for is that on turn two with my mana dorks, I can play one of my three drops. So I've got four Ice Storm I could play to kind of win the tempo game. So my opponent's losing a land, I'm gaining land, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but also Hypnotic Spectre in a way does the same thing. It also gives me an advantage. If I can put that down on turn two and attack with it, in turn three and it's unblocked, then my opponent loses a card from his hand. So both of these cards are kind of in there to give me some advantage from the get-go, from the early start. Obviously, my beefy creature is the Urnum, uh, the Urnum Jin. Uh, not the most original creature, but I mean, everybody plays it for a reason. It's a four, five, four, four mana. It's only one green, so it's ideal in a deck where you're playing with three colors. I'm also playing with two Sylvan Libraries, again, to give me that advantage. Obviously, I'm playing with the two Powerhouse Black cards, Mind Twist and um, Demonic Tutor. Now, I always feel a little bit mean when I'm playing Mind Twist in a green deck because it also means that I have regrowth, so I can actually regrowth my Mind Twist. So that's pretty, ooh, you know, that's, that's pretty heavy stuff. Um, I also play with Wheel of Fortune, of course, because I have a lot of cheap spells in this deck. So there's a chance that I get empty handed very quickly and then I can just drop my Wheel of Fortune. Now, as you can see, there is no power in this deck. So that's one of the reasons why 
I don't feel that guilty about playing with a mind twist and uh, with a mind twist in this deck. So curious to see um, how my Shadow Spectre deck is going to hold up against this very interesting Singleton Brew. I don't really know what to expect. So let's go to game one and see what's going to happen. Game number one is about to start. I'm sitting on the right and Richard is sitting on the left. <laughs> We're showing the hands. Richard tried to show his. I think I have an Elves of Deep Shadow and two Berserks there and a lot of land. So I'm not sure if I should keep this one. I'm doing it anyway, playing an Elves of Deep Shadow here. And look at that start from Richard, by the way. That Soul Ring and that Felwer Stone. Now playing his Suchi turn two. Difficult for me here, playing another Mana Dork. Obviously, this is not the ideal start for me. Because I'm hoping for one of my three drops when I have that Mana Dork in turn two. It's not happening. Another card for four, playing a Rook Egg. The 0-3 Arabian Nights creature. And when you block it and it dies, um, you get a 4-4 four, four Flyer. Oh, and there it is, a Urnum Jin. The 4-5, a perfect blocker for the Suchi. And I've spent some time tinkering on the settings of my uh, webcam that I used to record these matches. It's a Logitech webcam for the ones that are interested. And um, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy. Oh, look at this in Hypnotic Spectre. And that's great because it can fly over the defense of Richard here. So he'll have to deal with this. There is a Volcanic Island and he's just passing turns. So that means he's probably going to lose a card here. Playing a mountain here, attacking with the Hypnotic Spectre. So he's losing a card, losing a regrowth. Playing another Hypnotic Spectre. Ooh, and Richard is in trouble. I think he really needs to find a solution for these two hippies. He is paying some. No, he's not. Maybe. And he is playing with blue power. Maybe we have a. Ooh, okay. I wanted to say a Time Twister, but that's not coming. He's actually blowing up his own Rook Egg, liking this. That means he's getting a 4-4 Flyer. And I'm actually asking, <laughs> asking a pretty stupid question here. I don't play with Berserks often, so I ask, can I like just Berserk it at your end step? And uh, of course, Richard said, of course you can do it, but nothing's gonna happen because if you wanna, uh, the, the creature is only destroyed or doubled in power when it attacks. Um, so he's blocking now my Hypnotic Spectre. I'm playing a Berserk over my Hypnotic Spectre, meaning that his 4-4 Rook Ag token dies, and he has to get more damage, also takes the damage from uh, the Urnum. So he's getting pretty low. I'm on 12 now. Only one card in hand. Just attacking with both of them now. Is he going to block with his Havana Lines? He is not, and he's going to four life, and there's the Berserk, and that's the victory. Booms, so that's a pretty quick game here, and um, nice. Nice to see the deck working so well. So we are now going to our sideboards, because we actually have sideboards uh, with us as well, and then uh, we're gonna, gonna come back to you in game, in game number two. Game number two. And let's see what's going to happen not showing my hand this time don't know why and let's see if you know if Richard can find something here he had a really good start with that Suchi on turn two but I was able to ram my way into an early Urnum Jin and that was just a perfect blocker and then those hippies came Okay, it looks like, is he taking a mulligan or is he just reshuffling? Remember, it's just casual play. Ah, he's taking a zip of water here. And let's see, shuffling the deck. I really like those white sleeves by the way if, if your cards look really nice and crisp like mine are just <laughs> you know they're cheap they're beat up oh yeah he did take a mulligan he's putting one on the bottom here um 
but if you have really nice crisp looking cards white sleeves are really the way to go and again a really quick flash there from the hand of the shirt but we really couldn't see look at that nice start with the mock sapphire this savannah into the savannah lines i like that flavor wise flavor points here and i'm playing a lightning bolt or trying to but i guess so the savannah line's gone but there's the uh the Afrit and there's a terror so the terror actually came from my sideboard so i'm really happy with it and there's an ice storm i wonder if this is the right decision maybe i should have taken out his taiga because then he doesn't have any green mana anymore playing a balance and i guess that's really bad for my hand size so it's basically using it as a mind twist here and losing a land and losing cards here so that's actually a pretty good balance and playing a wheel of fortune so that's the card i kept there pretty nice game here i like it when it kind of goes up and down of course he has that disc in his hand and now we can start with the disc in hand he's found a loa uh-oh things are not looking great i just gave him a full hand and a turn to start so i'm not sure if this was the best decision gonna play hypnotic specter here and a quick lightning bolt there from Richards playing an ancestral recall. Ooh, and this game is going, it's going sour for me. Or is it not? Let's see. Of course, the Loa, and it keeps feeding him even more cards. Playing. Oh, I think this is. This is going to kill me here. This uh, mind twist. I only have one card left. Remember the discard is random, so it's not like I can I can pick one like I could with the balance. And I cannot find an ice storm for that library, and now he's also find uh, found an icy manipulator. Interesting here. Oh, of course he has that one land left to tap my hypnotic specter, and I'm gonna flip now. And that's a hit. I'm not gonna put it in slow mo because the angle is just not great, but that's a hit on the library of Alexandria. It's going pretty quickly now. And he's regroving it. Oh my god. It's really not. He just has too much cards. Like the, the fact when you have card advantage, you have answers to everything. And that's the problem. I'm still on 19. I've got a pretty high life total. But I mean, just looking at the way he's dominating this game is going to be very difficult for me to win this one. Going to 18 now, being attacked by the Elves of Deep Shadow. Beautiful card. Oh, look at that, King Suleiman. Oh, that's such a cool card. And you can, it's Arabian Nights. You can tap it to kill a Jinn or an Efreet. And now I actually just want to put my Urnum Jinn on the, on the board. So my opponent can kill it with his King Suleiman. Oh, it's such a beautiful card, King Suleiman. And there is a Chaos Orb on his side. And we're moving, we're moving the... The play mats a little because I was noticing not everything is on um, is being recorded properly, especially when it's uh, when you're using your full play mat. Oh, and there's a chain lightning. And what did I do here? I guess I killed the scavenger folk or something. It went a little bit too quickly for me, but I guess the scavenger folk is gone. Oh, of course, I'm sending back the chain lightning. Okay, this, sorry, sorry. I'm sending back the chain lightning on the scavenger folk. I mean, I was actually playing this game not too long ago. Great memory I have. Um, ooh, and there is, I don't know, he's destroying my mistress factory. The game is just going so quickly now. And remember, it's twice the speed, so it's kind of hard for me to follow. Playing an Urnum Jin, he can now destroy it. Oh, he's going to flip on it. Why not destroy it with King Suleiman? No, that, that would have been so cool. Ah, he doesn't do it. We have to, we have to play this match again, Richard, because you should have used your King Suleiman. Oh, nice, using a Time Twister. Uh, and I think, yeah, at this point, we gave each other a fist bump, because I, th I just think this is a great 
play. Obviously, he's winning, but you're just going for the flavor. You just want to have another full grip of cards and play even more cool spells. And this Singleton deck, it's so nice because he's just playing with really cool creatures and really cool cards. And of course, obviously, really strong cards as well. And, you know, I always like it when players use the power nine to build crazy stuff. So I like it when they're using power nine to build like a singleton deck like this. And there you go. It's second the Lotus. Tapping some lands. Uh, look at that beautiful Sarah Angel there. Oh, an Elfish Archer. Uh, such a cool card. And playing it Time Walk. Very classy. Very classy. I'm getting killed, but I'm getting killed by beautiful creatures so I can live. I can live with that. I, I don't mind. I can I can die like I can die in peace like this. I don't mind. It's one one. We're going to game number three. What more can you ask for? Beautiful game and this game went very fast. I think that it really showed how powerful a singleton deck can be when you have so many beautiful cards to your disposal. Uh, so it's one one. So let's go to game number three. Game number three and it's a one one. I like it going to the third game and um, I was yeah yeah in the in the game too you can see that the single to deck can work very efficiently um, you know because you might think because you don't have four offs it's going to be very inconsistent but it made a very strong impression on me good start for me here with a basic forest into a birds of paradise and my opponent here with the soul ring into a chaos orb finding a very good start for himself as well. It's going to be curious if he's going to use the orb early on, on for instance the Sylvan. And I'm just giving him two really good targets to use the orb on. Doing that on purpose actually. I don't want to um, feel like he's taking me hostage with uh, his Chaos Orb, so I'm just going to give him another good target. And now using that Ice Storm to take care of his City of Brass because he's playing with five different colors, so. Hopefully, uh, he now has some issues with, with playing out his cards. Finding there that Swords to Plows here is playing it on my birds. And the nice thing, ooh, I'm not finding any land. Ooh, and that could be pretty devastating for me. Playing a Berserk, in this case as a removal, but that does mean that I'm taking double damage from the Argovian Pixies. And finding that third land... Not finding any swamps. And look at this. Oh, this is painful because it means I'm going to lose two lands. And I'm really taking a gamble here by choosing to keep the factory. I want to just play very aggressively because I don't want to give him a chance to get his power cards out again and start playing them out. So just choosing a very aggressive route. I'm very lucky for to top deck that other factory and one of the reasons here by the way is that I'm attacking so aggressively is that I am playing against a singleton deck if I would have played against a regular uh, white red deck I would have been afraid for disenchants lightning bolts um, and swords but because he's playing with singleton he already played the swords I know that the chance of him having even more removal is pretty slim now, I still have a factory left. He's on six. So if I can find another Giant Grove and a Berserk next turn. And a land actually to play it all out. But then it's kind of done for. And look at this. Playing a disc. Attacking here. He's tapped out only with the birds. Giant Grove, Berserk, boom. There you see. And that's the power of the Berserk. I feel like this was... Very important um, because next turn he could have untapped with the uh, disc and obviously in response triggered a disc if he would see that I would use a giant grove or a berserk or whatever. Um, so okay, so that's a victory for me. A 1-2 victory, but what, what a beautiful singleton deck. I actually have some more games with the singleton deck recorded, so I'm definitely going to put some more games of of this on the channel uh, for now thank you for watching timmy talks if you'd like to see more old school magic you can click on the links that are appearing right now or of course you can have a look on the channel it's just filled with old school magic if you want to support me if you want to support the channel 
You can do this just by liking the video. That's the easiest way. Also, just by, by leaving a comment, tell me what you think about these decks. Would you Do you have a Singleton Old School deck? Would you like to have one? What do you think of that whole idea? Um, what do you think of my new brew, by the way? You know, um, would you make different choices? Obviously, you can add power. This is a powerless uh, uh, deck, so I've, I've done that on purpose. Um, yeah, let, let me know what you think of, uh, of my brew. Um, if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe if you want to support the channel. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic, and see you next time.